so let's carry on. Where was there? Where were we? Uh, we did somewhere here. Okay, maybe we can start just from here. Okay, like we said, the terminologies are there. Okay, people coin terminologies according to whatever. I don't know why. But terminologies are made there. For example, uh, in the laws, a simple giving, okay, where you give somebody, yeah, maybe an app. But in the law, yeah, carry on a big sentence, can become a paragraph. I surrender this apple unto you. I, I have no right to whatsoever to do, to, to eat anything. I grant even all the exclusive rights for to you to do whatever you may wish. You know, all such kind of things. I have no uh, power to reclaim it. It is all yours with all the rights and so on. That is in law. Okay, where well, is it simple as saying, okay, here you are, here is an app. Okay, so such things happen. Okay, so let's carry on with our, with our okay, I'll go with our terminologies. So we said the biometric template is a digital reference to the distinct features. Okay, characters that is extracted from a biometric sample. Okay, biometric sample from a biometric sample. Now look at that. Huh? So a biometric template it is a digital reference of the of, of the distinct characteristics that are extracted from a biometric sample. Okay. So now look at this. So this you need to be very careful. Okay, you need to be very careful because this one, this biometric template, it's not coming from what? Eh? Uh, you see, this biometric sample is not coming from a subject, yeah? okay? It's coming from uh, this uh, biometric template. It's coming from the biometric sample. You have noted that yeah? this biometric template is coming from mm, a biometric sample, not from a subject. You get, you get, you get that, yeah? So you need to differentiate a, a template and what biometric sample. I hope people are seeing the difference. Huh? So biometric template, it is a digital reference of the distinct characteristics that are extracted from a biometric sample. Then if you look at candidate, okay, this is a person who enters this biometric sample. So what does this mean? What it means if you look back to where we were looking at uh, how a biometric uh, system works. So when a, a sample is submitted by a data by a subject, right, who is you? So when that sample is submitted by a data subject, who is you? Okay, then the system extract what a template from there. The system will extract a template from a sample. Okay. Up these things, okay? No, no need to mix. These are just two sentences, right? One above the other, okay? You know, sometimes to avoid certain things, certain issues, uh, but you need to think a lot. Ah, uh, no, you don't need to think a lot. If you don't want to think, just, okay? Because look, even some of us, we used to pass through some, some of these situations where you don't understand yeah? some of the, ah, it, it can just be a problem when I ask something where you, you need to, to show logic or to explain sense, ah, to make sense, then it can be a problem. Right? But where we just ask, you know, then he, well, this what is that? Then you can get away safe. Yeah, you can get away safe. But should we ask it to make sense? Yeah, it becomes something else. Okay. 
So kusu atashi. Remember those days when we used to learn uh, comments, some of us used to take comments here. Uh, when you ask your colleague, ah, where are you, my friend, uh, than this one? Yes, what did I comment? Yeah. So, to this one. Yeah. Okay, so that's that. So, you need to be very careful there on those stuff. Huh? Mm -hmm. yeah. Then we add closed set identification. Huh? So, this is a state where a person is known to be existing in the database eh? yeah that's now where we have a closed set identification uh, status eh? a person is known to be existing in the database enrollment uh we know this one enrollment maybe if you forget if you are going to do that forget a lot you can just think of how you how you enroll how you enroll you enroll that uh, that university okay for the first time you know we don't ask you to register all the time mm -mm. you just you know so enrollment takes place what once so when you know then we know that you are a Makasa student yeah? that's how it works we want to to learn about you we just retrieve your file your file we don't ask you say go and register first. Mm -mm. So that's the first time registration where we collect more information about you. Yeah. Addresses, names, and everything else. So that when we match your data sample, you, we compare, want to identify you, we can easily get those, those details about you, your names, your address, and everything else. Huh? Yeah. Then we have uh, force acceptance rate. So this is simply a measure. Okay. Possibility that a biometric sample will incorrectly identify an unauthorized user as a valid user. Okay. This is a measure of possibility that one will be mistakenly to be an unauthorized user as a valid user. Such possibilities. Eh? So that's a formula there. What do you think if the value is high? What would you be your take? Maybe you are looking at uh, the factors eh? you are choosing. Eh? Okay, apart from those factors to choose uh, the biometric system that you, you that you would want to install, maybe there are also these values there. Eh? Maybe for this one, they accept for the FAR, okay, FAR is C, high. Then the other one, the FAR is what? Low. So what do you think? What can you say about such the values? The one which is higher and the one which is lower. Post acceptance rate. on the notes you can see right so it's just a matter of <laughs> uh, so you have noticed that uh, a biometric system providing low far ensures high security why is that why do you think that statement makes sense uh, which is given by number of false acceptances over number of identification attempts. Why is it that the low power ensures high secure, high security? The ANS. Well, the network to Google is taking long guy. Network <laughs> to Google is taking long. Yes. No, you raise your hand as usual. Let's have a order as usual. Mm. 
Okay. So you, you see why? So the relationship is that, okay? If we have a lower, just look at the relationship which is there. So if we have a large number above there, eh? number of false acceptances, okay? Over number of identification attempts, people trying to log in, eh? then we have so a higher number of false acceptances, which means that value is going to increase. The false acceptance rates are going to be high, which means more false acceptances are taking place. You get the point? Okay? Just from the formula itself, you can tell. So if you have a higher number of false acceptance rates, which is a weakness, it means there are a lot of acceptances, false acceptances that are taking place. Right? Number of identification attempts can even be the same with another system. But if we have number of false acceptances which are higher, then that weakness is then that uh, means the system is weak is weak okay yeah so it means we are allowing more unauthorized access so therefore you as a technical as a technical technocrat you, you are going to know to say ah the lower the false acceptance rate the better the lower the false acceptances, the better. Then it means the, the system is secure. It is secure. So that relationship should be now, uh, should, should make sense to you. Okay. So this is why we are having this statement. A biometric system providing low far ensures high security. And that's what, that's another thing to look at. Okay, then we also have another term, force rejection rate. Okay, now this is the vice versa to the other one, eh? where we have uh, force rejections. Okay, so force rejection, this is a measure of possibility that the biometric system will incorrectly reject an unauthorized user as an invalid user. Now here you are rejecting a person who is authentic, who is genuine, as unauthorized. So the relationship which is there is that one where we have number of post rejections over number of identification attempts. Right? Yeah. Number of who identification attempts. So number of false rejection over number of who identification attempts. So what it means again here is the number of false rejection. If we have a high number of false rejections over number of who identification attempts, okay, then it means our system is as well not not working properly. It means our user experience is so bad. Yeah? user experience will be so bad. So, a question might come, huh? giving you the, the values. Huh? So I can give you values, and then you compute there, and then you analyze what you, are, what you, what you can see. Huh? You analyze the rate and try to explain what it means. Huh? Yeah. That should be a straightforward model. Okay, yes, Lawrence. Yes, I, I think I'm not much clear over the same. If I can ask the question, since uh, we are saying the false acceptance rate measures the speed that the biometric system we incorrect and fire the You're asking on which one? The first one? Yes, sir. Okay. So uh, now how possible is it that the number of false acceptance will be more than the number of identification uh, attempts if the samples are affected how possible is it from the users like the users who was identified uh, to be the number of acceptance to be more than the users who have been identified not necessarily like, like that the way you are thinking huh? The rate can be even zero point something. Eh? 
So even in decimal, decimal values, you can see that this value is higher and this value is lower. So it's not only that uh, I know you are thinking of positives eh? or you are thinking of all numbers. No, these rates can be pointy, pointy that, pointy this, eh? but it can be higher or lower, eh? even in decimals. Eh? Yeah, 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 I see what you are, what you mean. For you are thinking that um, the one above should be higher than the one uh, below. Yeah, but it can, it can be like that. Huh? False acceptances. Ah, no, 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 no. It can be in, in zero point something. You are right, actually. You understand the sense of, of what he asked? Huh? people you understand what they say okay because the number of identification attempts is the total number of who is the total number of who uh it's the total number of attempts from which there will be false acceptances and then okay maybe even false rejections eh? so number of false acceptances and false rejections are a subset of attempts made so he was doing some maths this guy okay so he did some mathematics and he's making sense out of this so this number is the total number from which there will be false acceptances and or false what rejection so the rate is going obviously into zero point something eh? that's the idea good question that makes a lot of sense young man okay nice are we okay? Anybody to see clarification? Yes, are we safe? Sure, sir. Even the rest are safe? Yeah, obviously they are, isn't it? Ah, let's yes, move on. Ah, good. Mm, people did the math. Okay, nice. So let's move on. Okay. So force rejection. Okay, force rejection, it means the force rejection can give rise to people complaining. Ah, oh, this system, I've tried so many times. What, what, I enrolled. Ah, oh. but there are a number of factors that might, uh, might lead to this. What do you think, especially when it comes to force rejection? To number of force acceptances, ah, this one, mm -mm. we don't want. We don't want any of that to happen, yeah? Because uh, we don't want uh, false acceptances anyway, okay? But because it will be so convenient even to unauthorized people. But for this one, what do you think might go, might uh, be the factors? Huh? So you might be given a situation where we ask to say, uh, after installing a new uh, a new biometric system at a particular what? Okay, institution. It was observed that there were more number of false rejections. The rate, the false rejection rate was high than expected then. Okay. So now you can imagine, maybe think of uh, maybe uh, where we are authenticating using what fingerprints. Eh? So what could be the contributing factor? When he, perhaps we are using what the fingerprints. False rejection, where people are complaining. Ah, no, what, what? No, it can't be yesterday I was logging in. But now today I can't. Ah. Just bring back our old design. You know, people say that. Yes, uh, courage. Just to try, uh, maybe the overuse of uh, a system, or maybe there is maybe a denial of service. Yeah, there are so many possibilities. Eh? To develop other contours, so that that might affect. Okay. Just a, just a minute, there is some 
like we said, eh? so fingerprints can be affected, you know, such things. So even if you don't, do not quickly judge uh, your system as uh, as uh, being ineffective. Eh? Not as yet, uh, of course. Eh? Don't be so harsh, okay? Otherwise, if you are the person manning that kind of a system, then you are digging your, your own grave. Your own grave. Mm, you are digging your own grave. Otherwise, you might be rendered redundant. Ah, this is the person that came with this system. Ah, you should even go as well. Okay? So, we have another terminology, which is open search identification. So, here, they are saying the person is not guaranteed to be existing in the database. Okay? where it is, it is not guaranteed that, that that this particular individual is going to be found. Okay, that is open set identification. Yeah. Just like to be open-minded, then maybe what can what should be coming into your mind is to be open-minded. The person is open-minded. He knows that uh, he does not, he doesn't know everything. Yeah? Even other ideas from other persons are welcome. So, it is something like this, eh? Yeah. But when you have, uh, when you are thinking like uh, this one, close the set. Ah. So maybe that is something that can help you to have a clue, eh? About these things, these two terms. So open set identification it means the person is not guaranteed. Maybe he's there, maybe he's not. Okay? Like some people are open minded, yeah? No, no, yeah, no, listen to me. Yeah, you must know this and listen. Ah, uh, uh, no such. So, even here, maybe that can give you a clue as to what these two things mean. Yeah? Okay, great. Then there's a task. So, this is when the biometric system now searches the database for matching the sample. So, now that's a task. Okay, the system has a task. It's said to have a task when it is matching. Yeah? That's great. Okay, let's carry on. Mm -hmm. We have uh, biometrics mechanisms. Okay, so now we are getting now a little bit deeper into these things. Huh? We have biometric mechanism which can be broadly categorized into two types. So we have broad categorization, which is into physiological and the behavioral. Okay physiological and behavioral. So when we look at the physiological, okay, just when you look at physiology, human physiology, okay, physical, okay, looking at your physical vision, things we can see, those are the physi physiological, uh, physiological characteristics, that we are, that's what we are looking at. In the medicine, there is what they call human anatomy and physiology. They learn about just physically how a person is. What the, the, the person's uh, parts and so on, the physical uh, okay, design, how he appears, his appearance, all that. So here we also have that categorization. So we have physiological and behavior, behavior. So when you come to physiological biometric authentication methods, we are looking at characteristics of an individual's body. Yeah? So characteristics of an individual's body. That's what we mean by physiological. So what are some of these characteristics of, of an individual's body? So now this will include, obviously, such things as fingerprints. So fingerprint recognition falls under this category. Yeah? Fingerprint. What else do you think can be included in this when we talk about uh, characteristic of a human body? Okay, so let's see. Yes, Mwape. What do you think will be included in this? Ah, my page is gone. How about Makov uh, Karen? Mm, this combination of names. Eh? Ah, ah, ah. Okay. Mm, mm, Blows and the courage. Ah, 
It is uh, something. Yes, uh, Karis. Facial recognition. Yes, facial recognition as well. Mm -hmm. Facial. Okay. Moi, pay me so again. Yes, and geometry. Yes, all those. Huh? That's true. So iris recognition that you can see there, that is a, a characteristic of an individual's body. So iris okay, fingerprint, first of all, fingerprint recognition, it uses an individual's unique fingerprint patterns to identify them. So even when you are enrolling, you have seen, huh? at a time when you are enrolling, when you touch tap there, you see that it captures uh, from uh, some of those uh, contours of the fingerprint, captures a bit. And then it asks you, okay, again, so it, it captures further until it captures the entire what, fingerprint. So that pattern, it is said to be unique. Then iris recognition also use, uses the unique pattern in the iris of an individual's eye to identify them. So that which we talked about, which may be blue, which may be green, red, whatever, maroon, all sorts of colors. Eh? So there is also a pattern there. Actually, it is so rich. The iris is so rich. So all that as well is unique. Probably this uh, this approach can help us to, to split and identify even twins. Yeah. Yes, this approach can help us to even identify what twins, those people especially those uh the the these uh, they are they are fraternal and what fraternal and the and the ah you which ones fraternal identical, identical yes mm. so these two approaches actually if one and two are very very vital they are so unique okay then we have uh face recognition now this uses an individual's face. It is assumed that faces are different. Eh? Okay, some have shorter noses, others are longer, others wide noses, just like that. Wide mouths, small mouths, okay? Things like that. The eyes. Okay, so this looks at all this, all this configuration, huh? where it is, huh? the nose, maybe it's out of what, out of uh, the, the symmetry, it's only a little bit on the left side and so on, all that is taken into consideration. Huh? Okay, put together the result in something that is unique. Okay, then we have one geometry where you touch, huh? okay, some, some palms have... Uh, Okay, you let me know. If you don't get me, then uh, again as well, uh, just a little bit repeat, so that we don't get to lose each other so much. Eh? So if you feel that, uh, okay, the network has tripped there, or I'm um, cutting, you can ask for that. Eh? Okay, I can always uh, a little bit reverse a bit, so that we, we don't get to lose each other on the way, okay? So and, and geometry, this one uses the size and shape of an individual's hand to identify them. Okay, let's move on. I'll ask you uh, a question after this. So then we go to the vein recognition. So now there are patterns, huh? the blood vessels are also unique. The mesh of blood vessels. The mesh, okay. When the, these, uh, these 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 uh, vessels are looked under maybe some some visual aids such as maybe X-rays and all that. You see that there are a lot of mesh like uh, mesh mesh like uh, arrangement of the veins. So it is said that that should be unique as well. So so that can also be another pattern to look at. Okay, vein recognition. 
So you can imagine eh, if uh, people uh, heard that uh, they, they will install such a system, maybe those that uh, care about privacy they might rise up. Ah, this vain thing. Ah, no, maybe you want to what what to infect us. Ah, what 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 is this thing about veins? You know, people can can have a lot of stories to tell. Yeah, but anyway, the good uh, the, the 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 focus is on uniqueness. Eh? That that is a unique feature of who a human being. Then we also have voice recognition. It is said that uh, also the voices are different. Okay. The tone and the rhythm of their speech may be used to identify some subject, some subject who may be you. Mm, but, uh, voice, you will see. I will learn anything about this one. Okay. But there are two types. Huh? You can have voice recognition and what? Eh? Speech recognition, eh? there are two different types. So you, you are going to see. You are going to see the, the difference actually between the two, eh? voice recognition and the speech recognition. Eh? Maybe I can ask, what do you think? Which one, uh, what, 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 what's the difference? Maybe you might wish to guess. Might wish, wish to guess, huh? Voice recognition and uh, speech recognition, how are they different? Yes, uh, courage. This one is courageous. Eh? Mm. Attempting this, this one. Yes, go on. Just to try, sir. Uh, voice recognition uh, deals with how you, you how the sound comes out and on and the pattern in which your accent flows. <laughs> Okay, then speech recognition. Uh, speech recognition. AI. Hmm? Waiting for it to write those sentences, long sentences. Are you? Yes, Jeff. So just a try. Mm. For the top of voice, we are just talking about the tone that you are using, then speech, we are talking about the frequency of your sound. Okay, good try. <laughs> mm. Okay, Chipego. Mm, so I think for speech recognition, it's maybe the phrases you use to um, to access your device. Then for voice mm. recognition, it deals with the patterns of your voice. Yes. Now she has uh, summed, up, summed it up for us, isn't it? That's what it means, true. Mm, we have so many courageous. There's even in Suruya. Or is it someone different? Uh, sir. <laughs> sir, speech recognition uh, is about whereby you are you are speaking uh, and the the system is writing it, uh, the words you are speaking. It is writing them down. Wow, voice recognition is about the, identifying the patterns of your voice, identifying you your, your unique voice. Okay. Okay, that's good. Okay, you are very much accurate on the you people. You are very much accurate on the voice recognition. In the speech recognition, somebody has given this one has just given one application of voice recognition where people speak and then the computer writes. Eh? But uh, when it comes to identification, now the system takes into consideration apart from the. It combines the two apart from the voice recognition where it looks at the pattern of the voice, the pitch, okay, the tone, and all that. It also includes now the phrases. Spego said it's nice. It also includes the phrases and the words that are being used. So it may mean that um, those words may be stored, and then you have to say them, and then the system recognizes those words that have been said. Okay. Here, I remember one time, eh? students were what? 
we are graduating. I think that, that's a, that might be a good one. What used to happen is, I don't know what 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 was, what was that. They, they they are the password. Now the moment they would say they would tell anyone who was graduating to say password, you know what? These guys they were saying the same thing. Password. Yeah. Then the guy would talk. What what, what was he saying? What were they saying? They were saying what? <laughs> Forgotten, I will find out about that password. But they would say the same thing. This, this person is not there, he hasn't had a friend. But then once you once he's just asked the password, then he would say the same thing. So maybe that would be the case huh? where they have stored what some phrases that uh, some secret phrases. Huh? Okay. Maybe uh you, you you hear of such things, maybe I say Roger, Roger, whatever, whatever, whatever blah 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 things that can't make sense to you huh? yeah they can't make sense to you but uh, those guys are communicating are communicating so maybe in that sense huh, it may be a voice recognition yeah okay okay speech recognition rather of course rabbi uh, yes uh, i have a question mm -hmm. uh, on the facial recognition now is it possible that uh, here we have uh, twins who are identical? Now, once they use the uh, facial recognition, maybe, maybe someone has just uh, put the manan can. Yeah, I I I I I facial recognition with phone, but even the the other one, if if yeah. she comes, not accept. How is it possible like that? Okay, that's a good question. So that means um, you will see, we will start actually comparing, we will compare these modalities, uh, these different what, physiological biometrics uh, with the other. They have each their strength, uh, each one has its own strength. So we are going to compare. Actually, what you are saying may be the case uh, of where this might be, might not be. Uh, so secure so much okay because of such possibilities where we have identical twins so the face may be weak but somehow with the current technology which is uh, maybe high definition cameras we'll see how actually uh, improvement can be made uh, improvement can be made uh, to make sure that uh, the type of biometric that we are using it's what more accurate okay so that might be a weakness of one of these, huh? the facial recognition, actually. But with the current technology that we have been, ah, even such faces, huh? you guys are able to recognize twins now eventually, huh? when you stay, huh? okay? When you stay together for some time, you are able to tell, to say, ah, this one is Gapia, this one is Mpundwa. There are certain things that you tend to who recognize about them huh? that are unique about them you are still able to tell mm. so however when the biometric system like we are saying huh, it is used over time huh? it's used over time and so on huh? maybe it might lose that accuracy huh? it may lose that accuracy and uh, such a possibility where one twin, twin sister or brother can somehow infiltrate, huh? yeah, infiltrate or log in huh? or gain access where it's not supposed to, yeah. So we shall compare the Murabia, yeah? no worries, yeah, they are, they are such, huh? especially in relation to others. Huh? It can be accurate on its own, but when you compare to other biometrics system. Then you discover that ah, the others have much more strength than others. So we'll compare in terms of who, uh, how accurate with others. Yes, courage. That hand does. Yes. Uh, I just wanted to add on, on the, mm. to answer the question. Okay. Uh, even if they are twins and they are very much look alike, they have a spot where they make a difference. And that makes them different. And the identification, the authentication that occurs 
differentiate them and have witnessed that once before. Okay, that's good. So somebody has had even an experience for the same one. Nice. Okay. Where twins you would be differentiated. Eh? So it's interesting. Okay. You know, our colleagues, when they want to install a new technology, it undergoes trial, actually. Mm -hmm. Yeah. To undergo trial and testing. Eh? Okay. Trying to, to stretch the system to its limit. Even trying to get maybe the maybe the picture of someone actually will learn about that time <laughs> someday how images huh, might might somehow <laughs> how images might somehow grant access to somebody yeah yeah so we'll see how we can get around that time you can imagine huh, you have installed that system then somebody gets what a portrait huh? well defined Okay, this is a guy who wants just to gain to gain access, especially these guys from the east would want to get also to have access huh? to get crash to some functions. Okay, so they would want to try all by all means to to fool and uh, to try to fool the system here and there, but we'll catch them because that's why we are doing this program. Huh? We we'll catch such kind of individuals still. <laughs> yes, as we are going to get prepared for such. Okay? Yeah. So let's move on now. Okay? Unless there's a question, we are moving on. So, uh, in summary, we're saying these physiological biometric authentication methods are considered more secure than any traditional methods, such as passwords or pins, because they are unique to each individual and difficult to duplicate. So the bottom line is difficult to duplicate or forge. Okay, that's the bottom line. Difficult to duplicate and forge. Okay. But now the concern, the issue is that they are more intrusive and they raise privacy concerns. So all these, uh, like I talked about uh, the vein recognition, yeah, it can raise a lot of concern, that one. Are they trying to use ah the face where what where would they take my face okay maybe this is a person who deals who has some business dealings and uh, maybe it's not straight like a vein oil so it may not be straight so ah when they come to start installing maybe maybe at that particular company he has some deals eh? okay there's some deals okay but then they come to say, no, no, we are installing face recognition. Ah, it becomes startled. Ah, no, why? But why? Ah, but why? I'm asking such questions. I think things have been all right all along. Ah, why? Okay. Maybe it does some corruption at that company. Now, when he just hears face, face, ah, it's, it becomes a problem. Okay. So, privacy concerns may arise. So they are quite okay, but privacy concerns uh, may be an issue. Because they are intrusive, they are like intruding in somebody else's what? Eh? In somebody else's privacy. What that person considers to be private, that's what eh? this system actually goes on to, to try to use as eh? a form of identity. Okay. Then we have another category, which is behavioral biometric authentication. Probably, who knows, maybe this one came about because of such issues. Eh? Behavioral. Okay. Because you can't hide your behavior, isn't it? That one is open. You can see that behavior. Okay. If a person lie, likes to lie, is not truthful, we can see that. Okay. You can see that. And uh, we can see how a person walks. He's not going to pretend so, so, so many times. He's not going to manage. We'll see how he walks. We are going to see his handwriting. We are going to also see what? We are going to also see the signature. That will be visible. Such things cannot be hidden. So, and people don't get to worry so much about them. Okay. So, we have behavioral, biometric. 
So in this one, in this authentication method, the authentication and identification is based on your behavior, how you live your life, how you maneuver around, how you do certain things. Eh? So in here, we can have uh, things like strokes, dynamic, uh, keystroke dynamics. Okay. So in this one, there's a technology actually to, to tell how you actually interact with the, the keyboard. You can imagine uh, there are some, some software that can learn how you interact with your keyboard, how you type. It learns. Maybe before Soko it types his name. Uh, okay. He types an AC, he starts looking for what? For O. The entire keyboard scrutinizes looking for O and using a finger. Okay, where is a K? He starts looking for a K. So it knows it starts it, it starts learning. So another time that Soko starts typing, okay, it is it is it is starts recognizing. Eh? Say okay, Soko on average it takes uh, two minutes to look for another what another character. You see that time? Okay. Another character, it yeah. takes him so long. Huh? <laughs> so it learns how you interact, the pressure that you exert on a keyboard, and so on. Huh? Okay, we'll learn more actually the details about that. Huh? It's flighting, okay? Flight period and so on, huh? and landing on the keys. is what we call flight yeah. and landing. Okay, we'll see about that. So keystroke dynamics, how you interact with the keyboard, is it matters to the behavioral, Biometrics, eh? Okay. Then we have uh, signature recognition. So this one is also another way to identify individuals. And where do you think this is applied mostly? Signature recognition. Yes, Theo. Okay, that's a, it's a question uh, on uh, keystroke. Yes, go ahead. Yeah, my question is, uh, suppose uh, someone increases in, what is every time is increasing in the, uh, speed, the speed of uh, uh, stroking the keys, how possible is it that it can, uh, it can identify the behavior? That's a good question, yes. That's a good question. Okay, this one, it's not one, one once, so this system starts learning about uh, your behavior as you type. Yeah? Starts learning about your behavior how you type. Um, there is a branch in computer science called the machine learning. When you you guys uh, get to that point, maybe when you complete this course, this program, maybe some of you are going to push yourselves further. Further, you're going to push yourselves further. Uh, to to masters, maybe who knows, perhaps even PhD. Okay, so there's a branch called uh, uh, machine learning. Let me just give you an example of how machine learning takes place. Huh? Okay, suppose you guys uh, you guys uh, have opened your Tuma account, huh? maybe your Bill Master, your Tuma Zanako account. Huh? Now your accounts are known to contain maybe up to a certain amount. Huh? Okay, maybe it never exceeds a five, a five, a five, a five, uh, a five pin. That's the highest ratio that you you guys may have. Huh? So eating five thousand, then it means that's uh, that's something. Okay, maybe like that. So you can imagine maybe after maybe one year, your account is behaves like that. So there is a machine learning uh, such such machines which learn. Huh? These statistics, they can come up with a pattern. So, so they start looking for patterns in the data to say, okay, ah, uh, Soko's account, okay, it usually doesn't exceed what? Doesn't exceed what? Doesn't exceed 5,000, for example. And all the time the interaction, the, the, the transaction take place within what? Within Za? Within Zambia. Okay? The interactions or the, the transaction always take place within Zambia. 
That's what it has learned as a pattern from that account. Okay. And most of the time, okay, it's the individual that the same uh, account owner that uses it. And uh, this account is linked to this mobile number. So over time, systems get to learn about all these things. Okay. Artificial intelligence or machine learning. So now imagine what might happen. Huh? Maybe, fortunately, for some reason, ah, Soko gets to find himself in South, South Africa someday. Okay. Then, there he tries to access to say, ah, you have a visa. Let me even use it here as well. Here. He goes to an ATM in South Africa there. He tries to, he tries to withdraw. What do you think might happen? Maybe five years, huh? this guy has been interacting with his account. Huh? Okay. So the system has learned, okay, it has identified the pattern to say, okay, this account is operated from within Zambia and the uh, uh, amounts never exceed 5,000, 5, whatever transaction take place there, they are below this amount threshold. Also, maybe Soko has never withdrawn uh, from an ATM, maybe at zero one, he has never done that. So you guess what? So when uh, this person tries to withdraw maybe money at zero one or zero two, the system might question that kind of transaction. Eh? Okay, you just discover how ah, you are being asked questions. Ah, why, why provide this? Okay, ah, they ask you some questions here and there. Ah, say, but uh, this is my account. My account. Why? It is because they say they, there has been machine learning that has taken place. So, what is the idea? So, this machine learning, like keystroke dynamics, is something that can take over time. Huh? Okay, every day that you interact with the, with the same keyboard, okay, it starts learning about you. Okay, every time, every time, okay, eventually, especially when you are logged in, huh? you log in. So the system gets to know that, okay, the person who has logged in, it's James Soko, okay, and his keyboard stroke dynamics kicks in, in play and starts learning about that interaction. So it can be maybe a longer, maybe six months, it keeps on learning about you. So that way it can learn about uh, your behavior, how you interact with the, the system. Okay, how you key in your, your keyboard, such things. Eh? But you will see what else is considered eh, as we learn. Eh? Okay. So you will see how, what, is, what else is considered. Eh? The pressure that you apply as you key in the, the keys on the keyboard, that also matter. Okay. So all those things. Eh? Remember, we have said, eh, Okay, behavioral uh, physiological biometrics are much more stronger than actually the behavioral ones. Okay, that you should take note. The physiological biometrics are stronger than the behavioral biometrics. Eh? Okay, so now I was asking about uh, signature recognition where they, um, they may be applied. The most popular, okay. Okay, application. Where, is, where, where do you think it is? Yes, banking and financial what services. True. So that's where we do a lot of signing. What check you are supposed to sign? This signature that you that you that you see, you don't have to be changing anyhow. One day you're not going to be recognized. Okay. So do you don't play around these signatures anyhow. Some people have been asked to go and update their signatures because of that. The system is able actually to, to identify who it is that signed. Just a signature, a check, for example, a check, somebody who signed, it's able to retrieve that particular individual. That's how serious it is. And that's how uh, somehow, even behavioral biometric authentication, that's somehow how, how accurate it can be. It's able 
You have to say the no who did the signing. So please avoid the trying to uh, to impersonate others, eh? especially when it comes, it is something that is going to be scanned and uh, pass through some biometrics. Uh -uh. Avoid that net because you are going to be caught. Okay, you are going to be caught. That will turn out to be a fraud. It will turn out to be a fraud. We don't want to be uh, such a such a criminal, okay? Because such systems are very accurate when it comes to signatures. Okay. Okay. We'll go on. So there is also a get analysis. So get analysis now. That's where we look at how a person walks, huh? how he swings the hips here and there. Okay. Others, they walk one, one leg, maybe a left leg walks nicely, then the other leg, when it moves, okay? Okay? Those guys, huh? at uh, these stations, huh? that's how they walk. Huh? One leg is just fine, then the other leg, they walk. So that's how he walks. Okay? Maybe it could be this female, wow, she walks, she swings around them. Huh? It's uh, just interesting how sometimes they change steps. Huh? Okay, maybe the guys are sitting around there, okay, they are, they are seated there. And then this lady comes passing, uh, she changes, she starts swinging. It can be confusing, it can be confusing to a biometric system. Huh? Yeah, you know, such things happen. But, okay, you can't pretend, you can't pretend always, isn't it? You can never pretend always. So someone, after learning about how you work for some time, the system gets to identify you. So it uses the way an individual walks, including the way they swing their arms and legs to identify them. As others, when they are walking, they, they throw their arms here and there. In some places like China, you don't do that. You, or you Otherwise, you may be consuming space for others. Eh? You might be including other spaces, eh? because it is so pop populous, and even in India. So in some places, you just walk up with your hands, eh? your arms, eh? okay, stuck to you, eh? okay, okay, as if you are, you are, you are, you, 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 you are, you are caught, eh? because your swinging of the arms eh? gets in, in the way of others, okay. Zambia is, is, is so pop it's, so, it's, it's less populous. Okay, we are free to move, move about and swing our arms here and there. Okay, so get analysis looks at all that, huh? how the arms and the legs move about. Okay, how the, the strides are made, for example, even when a person runs. So that might be used. Huh? Then there is also mouse dynamics. So even this one, hmm, you can imagine, yeah. How do you think the, how do you think he, this one, hmm, it's interesting how this, these guys can include this one, right? Eh? Mouse dynamics uses the unique way an individual moves their mouse, including the speed and direction of their movements, eh, to identify the one eh? picks. Eh? So maybe James Sogo may be, may, may have, a challenge to use a keyboard, but with a mouse, ah, he's an expert. <laughs> Clicking here and there. You haven't even seen where he has clicked. Okay? You just see, you just see windows closing and opening and so on. Yeah? Some people are like that. Okay? You see windows moving about here and there. Okay? With mouse click, with mouse clicks. So the, the system is able to learn about such things. Also, handwritings. Okay, you recall maybe those underwriting that, that uh, you used to write, yeah? back the, back in the days. Okay, your teacher would tell you to write handwritings. So eventually, now you guys have adopted your own handwritings. And by the way, let me take this opportunity. You guys, you should do, make sure that your handwriting is better. Long are the days when we should be struggling eh, to read what you are writing. Make sure that uh, we don't have one sentence, what? One word sentence, no. Let's have these words separated. It helps a lot. 
when marking, when trying to look at your work. So learn to separate these words then. Yeah, that's good. So writing dynamics also, they uses the way a, an individual writes, including the pressure they apply to the pen, and the speed of their writing to identify them, okay? Not to help by somebody's writing, tearing pages. Ah, that is too much pressure. Tearing pages and so on. You know what? But don't do this. I'm just going to share this experience. Okay? We are invigilating some exams. Huh? We are invigilating some exams uh, here, here at CBU. And uh, we caught someone. We caught someone who had uh, smuggled some papers, eh? Mwembeshi. So now what was on that Mwembeshi? It was just blank. It was a blank paper. So now how is it that this is Mwembeshi? Ah, guess what? When we looked at it closely, we discovered that it had some... It was like a stance one, okay? It's like a stance when you look at it at an angle, you discover that ah, there was data. Mm, there was data there. Okay. So, what this individual was doing was he, he had put that paper under some data, and trying to write. Yeah? So, he was writing, 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 and the paper was blank. <laughs> ah. You guys can be resourceful, can be innovative mm, in such situations. Yeah. So I do we not catch him? Yeah, yeah, the lot of that. The, my nature, it was my naturalized. <laughs> it was crazy. Ah, but we had to catch him. Wow, we caught him. Caught up with him. Mm. So uh what what we are just saying is um so even such things uh, can be taken into account the pressure that you are applying onto a pen, on a pen and even the speed that you are writing. Uh, so it can be uh, an identity. It can be it can be used to identify you. So this is this is uh, constituting behavioral biometric sign. So it is said that this is less true, intrusive. Here, we don't have uh, people raising alarm as to uh, privacy issues, okay? People accept such things, okay? Okay, they, they can allow you to see their signature, and there's no issues, okay? No issues with that, no issues with how they walk. How are they going to hide how they walk? No one is going to hide. We are going to, okay? How they sign, we are going to see that. Okay, how they type the keyboard, we are going to see that. So it is said that uh, this is less intrusive than physio physiological biometric key authentication. Okay, and as well, it can be more difficult to forge as well. Huh? Like I said, these signatures they differ, it is very different from the others. Huh? Okay, even if others they try to forge, it's only that uh, in our system we don't apply such recognitions. Huh? Biometrics are not everywhere. Okay, just in banks somewhere. But somewhere, some, some individual will just look at a signature. Okay, ah, it is signed. Okay. And he's happy with that. Okay, a forged what? A forged signature. Okay. Yeah. Now, even if they are like that, huh, they are less uh, intrusive. But what do you think when compared with the physiologic ones? Okay, when you compare with the physiological ones, you discover that uh, they fall far short uh, in terms of uh, security. Uh, yeah, even in a signature, ah, somehow, somehow, there are such, such, such a graver, graver individual. One graver individual is going to fall somehow. He's going to write exactly. You see that? Uh? If we can have artists that can draw your face. How about a signature? So there can be such guys, eh? It's possible. Mm. It's possible except to forge. Yeah. Uh, they are forging, for example, 
Um, okay, uh, voice, huh? What do you think about voice? Yeah, it's possible. Voices can be can be forged and they can be impersonated. We have guys that are comedians already. We have guys that are comedians and they imitate others huh? like crazy. You feel that you, you think this is a person, an original person that is talking. Okay? Okay, there are such people who are called the junior buddies, there are such people who are called the Mr. President. You know, such individuals, eh? mm. they, they might be a threat to our system if we went for. If we went for a voice recognition, yeah, they might be a threat to such guys <laughs> to our system, to our speech recognition system. Why? Right? So, yeah, it's rough. Mm -hmm. It's rough. It's, it's, it's crazy. Mm -hmm. So they are somewhat weaker. Although they are less intrusive, where people can be comfortable with them, they are weaker ways of authentication or identification. Eh? They are weaker. So now let's look at uh, application areas of biometrics. Okay. Where can you apply this? We like asking about this because when you are doing now a, a bachelor's program, you look at how to apply certain things. Huh? You don't just want to do something that people can watch. You want to see how is it practical? Does it work? Does it benefit anyone? Why anyway have you done that? Those are the questions that we ask. Why have you done that? Okay. Is it just to surprise us? To, to, to make us... Uh, Okay, get surprised about what you are doing, or is it just a trick? As we want to see, so what? Okay, so that's what we that's where we have reached. So what? Biometric biometrics. So what? Okay, so this is an area where we look at the application. So we look at uh, controlling workplaces access. So access control. Some of you would just say access control. Huh? Controlling workplace access. So that's another way, workplace access. Physically, yeah? controlling a workplace access. So I've noticed this one. Huh? This we are saying controlling workplace access. This is physical access. Access. So you can use it. You can use biometrics to control physical access to some place. Okay, maybe at the gate. Okay. Where well, we say, okay, for someone to enter Kapatsamagas now, that place uh, is poor as anywhere we can. There are so, so many to my paths coming from bushes. Uh, we can't manage that one. Okay. Yeah. Then we have uh, identity establishment of people for authentic citizenship and migration. So in migration. Huh? Actually, we'll come to learn about uh, more application of this huh? later. So to authenticate people, citizenship. By the way, what has happened to our what has happened to our NRC systems, you guys? What is there? Have you have you uh, are you up to, to date with the, that kind of system? Who can say what is happening? What has uh, what has been happening? Ah, you guys, you, you don't know. You are you are you are on your own. What about the others? Ah, you were you were so cool. You're also on your own. Chipego? Yes, sir. Um, NRCs. Uh, previously, our uh, NRCs used to be documented in folders and files, but now it's it's going to. It's now biometric. It's now fingerprint. That they'll give you a card. Then I'm not sure about this, but. When you go to certain organizations like when you go to certain companies like napsa they already have that information there and like you just go with nrcs and they're also restricting on frauds where people just used to lose the nrcs and then you go and get another one without paying yeah yes you're right that, that's true 
So they have introduced digital analysis, huh? where now we are doing the fingerprints, huh? where, which, are, which, which are stored now in the system. That fingerprint was outside, it was on the card, huh? okay? which somebody can throw it, you can change the, the picture there, okay, and uses it. Ah, I see also. Mm. Now sure. So now they are digital. So make sure that you have, uh, you do that one, right? Do that one, okay? The digital one. Mm. Do the digital one because that's where we're going. And uh, if you look at also this, this system called NIMA, they are also applying that time. Right? access services uh, to authenticate whether you are the particular individual that is accessing med medical services uh, so you, you tap somewhere you, you hold the finger somewhere and then you are authenticated this mistaken identity it used to happen yeah where people were just using maybe cards uh, you know they are what we call uh, insurance where people have medical insurances where they have cards and so on maybe some of you are coming from such families huh? where your parents have cards for you and so on you can access private say, medical services now imagine some people have sought services from others who have such insurances now guess what happens now <laughs> yes maybe you can somebody can use another person's card okay maybe for headache okay just a dick okay something that is less serious right but for serious cases uh, 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 somebody needs to be careful so what happened one day was it uh, okay somebody sought services you say ah no i can assist this uh this relative of mine or i can assist this friend of mine no you can come and use my my insurance huh? so this person now used the card of someone else huh? And this person works, okay? This guy works, huh? The one that that, that, that holds that insurance, he works. Uh -huh. Now that person who uses that, I uh, became critical. Ah, uh, sick, so sick, ah, uh, sick, sick, uh, no improvement, what, what? Ah, the disease became so critical and the individual, unfortunately, passed away. Now look at that. When they are using that card, it means it's the bearer of the car, the card of insurance who is registered. Now it becomes serious there. Now you end up having me, that individual dying, but he's alive. He's alive. So you see why now biometrics is important now, where they, they should come in. So it was very difficult. Now this particular individual, what, what would he say to the company? Ah, because now the doctors are going to certify that he, okay, this individual is no, is no more, is dead. Ah, it was trouble now, that's where now, okay, affidavit and so on and so on, there was, it was a serious issue. Ah, okay, it was just, uh, it, was, it was a situation whereby just people came in and tried to use the resources, huh? Make sure that uh, this this case doesn't what spiral out of control, okay? Now it moved down. Yeah, law enforcers, what what ah you know such kind. Of, so avoid such kind of these things, huh? okay? So we need to avoid such to get entangled in such situations, okay? So hence, so if you see such cases, huh, you are at a particular what a particular organization you are employed. And then uh, such situation, then you may convince them to say, ah, you, sure, you know what, we need to install this system, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> hey, what are you in class? Hmm. But she did work well. Ah, 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 switch off whatever it is that you have over there. Because these questions we ask, you know, this course, it looks like it's, it's uh, okay. 
but we don't just want you to to restate things no we want your application that's what you need to know you can interact with your colleagues huh? about this course actually understand and appreciate that these things are real are real in real world out there okay so when somebody is having a party like that and viewing whatever and it's a game whatever and so on ah you need to be very careful okay okay good so controlling workplace access huh? so physical access control that's that one that's one application then you get to have identity establishment of people for authentic uh, People can just pass through the bush and they are in another country. Uh, as, as, as long as we know that uh, this is accurate, then we can even be... Uh, we can even draw confidence, huh? we can be confident in, uh, in the system. Huh? Okay, if we are using uh, biometrics, we can even be confident about its security and do those online e commerce transactions. So it is also applied in fraud and theft reduction, where people, you know, fraud takes place when, when, when a person impersonates, huh? where, whereby a person tries to forge, uh, okay, impersonate someone by trying to forge the by trying to forge their signatures by trying to forge maybe their NRC and so on so here when we implement these biometrics then we are trying to reduce such kind of fraud and theft deduction and remember when you introduce systems to interact with people then you are eliminating even corruption and all that fraud eh? because mm -hmm. if a person is not authorized then he is not authorized if you are not authorized zulu then you are not authorized that is it no arguing no way no that the one who is inside is my uncle but how come when you are not authorized you are not authorized it's like that that no arguing you just walk away okay the system will deny it so in that sense, it reduces fraud, it reduces theft, it reduces theft, and even corruption, you can imagine, it reduces such vices, okay? And the, in law, in Florida, where we want now to, to see people, okay, abiding by the law, okay? Where we should be able to identify people in the crowd, okay? Who has done what, like crowd control, huh? They can pick out uh, maybe when you guys start vivuka uh, vivuka whatever whatever they starting to throw stones over that important road. Then we come, huh? then we examine you, and then we do some surveillance upon you as a crowd. Then we see ah, it appears so cool. The one that is throwing. registering in the, and that NRS, it's a, a way of trying to to have a national database which is a good thing so when you do this digital digital when you go digital digital signatures i mean do, you go digital analysis it is a way to build what a national database and it's very important in those lands those advanced lands they know their citizens very well okay it can help to identify that this one is not here. It doesn't belong in this, to this country. Okay? It will be easier that way. So now it, it can become a problem when you when you are you become a problem, okay? To the law. So when you are throwing stones, then they scan, yeah? They identify you to, to say, okay, maybe the system tries to focus on this individual. Say, ah, this is, this guy seems to be so active one with stones, impossible. Huh? So he focus on you. Okay, 
ah, and try to retrieve information about you. Ah, they quickly learned that, okay, actually, oh no, this guy came from Kitwe. Okay, this guy came from Kitwe and he, ah, he stays at Chambori, whatever. Ah, then he goes, oh, yeah, that place, oh, oh what? Oh, Sakiri. Yeah, that's a place of uh, confusion, you see? And they learn about where you stay. So in this sense, uh, people can be less likely to involve themselves in it. some confusion, some uprising, okay? Some protests, uh, I think, ah, uh, no, it's not worth it. Self-picking and so on, eh? So in the end, we are enforcing the law, okay? Enforcing it of the law. So that can be better. So these are some of the application areas of biometrics, people. You can think of others. Huh? We are going to learn the uh, application of these uh, biometrics in the cloud. We are also going to also come to learn about uh, application of biometrics in the in e-commerce. We we'll also learn about the application of biometrics in what? In internet of... of human trait to take as input. Okay, that's biometric modality. Okay. I hope you guys, you are using uh, the network connection, eh? You are using the network connection, eh? Uh, not uh, data, band your data bundles, isn't it? You are using uh, the institutions, the connection. No, you are. Yeah, no, it's not that. Yeah, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, uh. The network is down for the scooter. Ah. 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 Yara kumana manzi ya pata ya bomba. And then we looked at uh, this biometrics mechanism being divided into okay, physiological and behavioral okay, methods. So we looked at physiological biometric authentication methods, which included, okay, physical characteristics of a human body, isn't it? Okay, such as those things, fingerprint and so on, face recognition and others. Huh? And we I, we came to establish and concluded that this this We also went to behavioral biometrics authentication, which doesn't raise it, okay, privacy concern by so many others. And we looked at keystroke dynamics, signature recognition, gate, mouse, and the writing dynamics, okay, all those. So it should be noted that this uh, biometric, behavioral biometric is less intrusive, of course, but less accurate and so less secure isn't it and then we have just noticed and uh, discussed the application areas which at some point will be subject on their own they will stand out okay great people okay good interaction people are interacting yeah. now okay well, we just need more more and more participants huh? people okay we need more participants Okay, see you tomorrow again. Soon done. Okay. Thank you, sir. Have a good night. Good night to you too. Thank you, sir. Okay, bye bye. It's good night. Don't forget the signature. Never. <laughs>